What do you make of the controversy over the uh, AP course uh, in Afro African American studies? I guess it's studies, not history. You know what I'm talking about? In in Florida, Florida? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two things. Why the hell does a college board have any control over anything to do with American education in this country? I hope people <laughs> use this as a, as a moment to investigate that. And two, um, <laughs> I, I think, I think most of, uh, I mean, most of this, that sort of thing just reeks like culture war nonsense to me. Um, even if it does have an effect, it, 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 it mostly to me operates on the level of culture war. Like it's, those people don't really care about history. It's not like the new college of Florida, the honors college there, whatever is funding jobs in history or the university of Florida. It's mostly a way to yeah, score it's, it's, points in the, in the run up minor. to 2024. It's, it's, it's very minor. That's what I would ultimately say too, which is frustrating to me. And Glenn, please feel free to disagree with me is that all the public commentary about universities has to do with DEI stuff. And I'm like, the, the, these fields are dying. You know, in 20 years, there will be no historians and we're spending all of our energy talking about DEI. To me, that's a that's a real problem. It's missing the forest for the trees, in my opinion, even if you disagree with DEI and even if it reflects something about the administrat uh, administratification of the university. I'm skeptical that university leaders really care about diversity, equity, inclusion as a class. Um, but to me, it, it, it's not the most important issue facing the, these fields. No, I agree with that. I disagree if I if, if I disagreed. Uh, but so let me see if I got the story right. So there aren't any jobs. That means people are not going to elect and spend years preparing themselves for a life in this discipline. So the discipline is dying. Why are there not any jobs? Because the university is going to hell in a handbasket, I somehow think. And we've commodified and and mark and you know made into a market phenomenon this whole process of uh, this uh, late adolescent educational whatever whatever we mean by educational experience and uh uh the result is that we have gig uh professors can I just uh, address the supply and demand issue quickly yeah uh, so people often say well there's not jobs for them the thing is there's tons of jobs they're just crappy jobs because the university, university system is a cartel. That's a big problem. It's effectively an unregulated cartel. Um, so I think to make act, any actual changes, you'll have to have some legislation, whether at the state or federal level. Um, Bernie was a, um, was approach, uh, was proposing something like this, that you would, in order to receive federal funding, a certain percentage of your faculty would have to be tenure track. Um, I think at this point, barring some massive wave of unionization, which uh, I don't know, Glenn, uh, per university professors who are tenured aren't the most uh, willing to unionize. Uh, and they're the ones with the most power. Barring something like that is going to need some sort of legislative solution. Otherwise, it's just going to collapse. I think it'll probably well, just collapse. Explain the cartel point. I don't understand. How, is the, how are the university's cartels? Because you can't go elsewhere with a history degree. So it's not actually a uh, degree that gets you into other professions. So the university is effectively the sole place that you can be employed for the job that you were trained for. So they function as a cartel with setting setting prices, you know, setting who's going to be hired and who's not going to be hired and what types of jobs that they're going to hire and what types of jobs that they're not going to hire for. And so for, they've effectively... For a cartel, I, I would think you'd need some kind of coordination. I mean, the, the well, fact this that is they the set question. the price... They compete are, with one another, don't they? Are they coordinate? I mean, okay. So we haven't we have an argument about the political economy of the university. Yeah, I mean, this is I, 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 if if you notice, there's a certain class of presidents who move between universities, right? When when you when you I have hire that. yes, when you hire these people, <laughs> they, I have noticed. I, that. So I would say um, it does function like a cartel. People might disagree, but but. Uh, I don't know. If, if you disagree, I'd like to hear. So you why. want the high, the percentage with tenure higher. I mean, I could see an argument for going in the other direction and reducing the number of people who have tenure to zero in the fullness of time, because it is, isn't it a kind of contractual feature uh, that, you know, uh, it, it, it's supposed to be guaranteeing independence, but I think that's a pretty thin argument. Uh, so, the uh, sunsetting of, you might I just think explain it's a pretty why. thin, thin argument, uh, unconvincing argument to me. Why? Could you just explain that, why? So what's the risk? The risk is the person has a view that's unpopular and that their position is compromised because of that. And we're, we're trying to assure them 
employment in order to give them the freedom to think for themselves and not have retaliation. And that's why I'm granting tenure. I think that's a lot that you, you're locking yourself in to a, a lifetime commitment to something. Circumstances could could well, you know, evolve and, and develop. Uh, and, I, and I don't know why I have to use that as the as the form of compensation. I mean, I could pay them more or uh, give get other uh, kind of benefits to the retirement package or something rather than give them a lifetime guarantee of a job. So uh, I don't know why tenure I understand that it's security, but it's very rare. You don't see it in other it, uh, trades or professions. I mean, it, it, it's... Well, you used to. Uh, I mean, uh, under the neoliberal capitalist economy, it got rid of that sort of Fordist vision where people work at, you know, two or three but companies. But why not get rid of it? Why lock yourself in? I mean, what's the what's the, the principle for that? We, we should negotiate a contract that allocates the responsibilities and, and risk in, in whatever mutually beneficial way we, we arrive at. I mean, I don't see why tenure uh, has to be sacrosanct. I, I I mean, I'm not married to tenure as such. I just don't think that's going to actually happen in the actually existing capitalist economy of 2023. I think if you got rid of tenure, everyone's working conditions would just get worse. So it's also a historical question and not just a philosophical question. Um, I think that would be the final death blow. But I, I agree, I'd prefer to live in, in a society where people were able to organize and make actual demands on their employers. But absent that, Ten years, what we've got in this particular system for peculiar historical reasons related to how Americans envisioned the purpose of the university. That's what, it's a historical answer, not like a philosophical one. You can imagine worlds where you don't need tenure, but in this one, <laughs> I'm sticking to my tenure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not trying to take it away from you. I'm, I was just thinking out <laughs> Don't loud. Don't worry, someone else will. But also, it's interesting. Conservatives always complain that they're never that they're not allowed in in, in universities, and you would think they would be the utmost defenders of tenure, so that they could actually express heterodox opinions. <laughs> 